After noticing variations in the price of Azure services based simply on location, I decided to look for patterns. Microsoft has a useful web page with links to the pricing details for its various products. Here's the URL for the US page. Of all the different Azure products to choose from, I decided to use virtual machines as my example service to find pricing patterns based on Azure regions. Clicking here takes us to the pricing details page for VMs, and clicking on the pricing table link brings us to the first of many tables. As of May 2022, there was a table for each of 86 different series of Linux VMs. Here I'm looking at hourly rates for Linux VMs in the US region named West 3. In particular, I considered the pay-as-you-go prices, and for this first example, we'll use the M64MS VM type, which cost $17.35 per hour in West 3. By changing only the region to East 2, the price dropped by $7 per hour. When we click its Add to Estimate button, this VM was added to the Azure calculator, and we can view the calculator by clicking the provided link. Here you can see parameters in the Azure calculator for the M64MS. With the region set to East 2, I adjusted the usage parameters to get a $100,000 estimated price. Then, by changing only the region to West 3, there was a 68% increase in the price. So, which region you choose can be very significant. There are currently nine public Azure regions in the US, and the amount of VM types available in each region varies. From a high of 892 in the East region to a low of 617 in the West Central region. Let's see what this looks like on a map. The East region in Virginia has 275 more VM options than the West Central region in Wyoming. And here are the amount of Linux and Windows VM options in the other US regions. Also, Microsoft is in the process of building a new region in Georgia. The next VM type I'll use as an example is A8M V2. Here's the hourly rate for this VM in each region, arranged from lowest to highest price along with the arithmetic mean. And here's the percentage change of each region's price from the mean. East 2 and West Central are very close to the mean, so I'll use them as a baseline and ask the question, what would $100,000 of usage in these two regions cost in the other seven regions? Here's an example of the two extremes. If you would have chosen West 2 instead of West Central, you would have saved nearly $17,000. But if you chose West instead of West Central, it would have cost you $13,000 more. Here's what the other spends look like. This is just a really good example to show how much price variability there can be from region to region. To look for pricing patterns, I first consider 255 Linux VM types that are each available in all nine regions. And I chose the amount of RAM in each VM type as a variable I could use to group together VMs of relatively similar size. RAM is a good proxy for VM size, so we can see if there are regions that have better prices for small VMs versus other regions that have better prices for large VMs. I was able to get nearly a quarter of the VM types in each of the four groups. For example, look at the second group highlighted in green. There are four Linux VM types that come with 28 Gibby bytes of RAM. And if you count the VM types with RAM from 28 to 64 Gibby bytes, you get a total of 65 VM types in the second group. 
Now I'll describe the main metric I use to find a pricing pattern. Here's a long list of the 65 Linux VM types in the second group, along with their prices from only the West 2 region. When I zoom in, you can see a row for the A8M V2 that I mentioned earlier, and in its last column, you can see West 2's nice 17.7 decrease from the mean of all the A8M V2 prices in the nine US regions. When I calculated the average of all 65 numbers in the last column, I figured that across all VM types in the second group, West 2 averages nearly a 10% decrease in price from the means. This chart shows the average percentage change from the mean prices of each region's four RAM groups. It quickly shows which four regions usually have Linux VM prices below average and which five regions usually have above average prices. I'll overlay the bottom part of West 2's prices from earlier to show how the second group's overall average of negative 9.68 is represented. Another observation is that there is no significant difference in pricing pattern based on VM size. The bars for all four of each region's RAM groups are either all going down from the 0% line or they are all going up from the 0% line. This is a useful chart because it shows which regions are likely to be less expensive for Linux VMs. However, I am charting a form of central tendency, which is an estimate of where most of the prices are located. This means there can be occasional exceptions to this pattern so you should always consult a pricing details page before choosing a region for any product. Here's a map of the regions that will usually have lower Linux VM prices. The two east regions in Virginia, the north central region near Chicago, and the west two region near Microsoft headquarters in Washington. And here are the five regions that are likely to be more expensive for Linux VMs. The last thing I did was to see if the pricing pattern for Windows VMs is similar to the Linux pattern. I considered the non-hybrid pay-as-you-go hourly prices. I divided the 254 Windows VMs available in all nine regions into four groups based on RAM size. And here's what the pricing pattern chart looks like for Windows VMs. The four less expensive regions for Windows are the same as for Linux, West 2, East 2, East, and North Central. The biggest difference is that there is less price variability for Windows VMs. Note that the extreme averages touch the 6 and negative 6% lines here, whereas on the Linux chart, the extreme lines were at 10 and negative 10%. I hope the main point of this video is clear. No matter which Azure products you choose to use, always compare regional prices first.